Good morning. Welcome to the Gateway. Thank you so much for joining us today. Those of you joining online, you want to know why we're laughing? You should have been here. Um, uh, we have pre-service prayer Sunday mornings um, at 9.30 before service starts. Just a really good group of family that comes together and listens and uplifts to the Lord the needs of our week, our day, our month, our life. Amen. You also have access um, to that support through the prayer chain, um, either text or email. The information both here and available in your programs to take home and pin to the fridge or input into your phone. Um, this week, we have the teen ministry meeting um, yeah. Tuesday, September 27th at 5.30. Um, remember, beginning next month, it is going to be changed to the first and third Tuesday of every month, not the second and fourth. So, teens, I hope that you're here and you have a blast. I know Dana's going to show some pictures sometime, hopefully next week, of just some of the fun shenanigans that you guys have been underway uh, with. We also have a Wednesday night Bible study mm -hmm. yeah. at 5.30. Um, this week being the fourth week of the month, it's going to be geared more towards worship. Um, but every other week, we dig deep into the Word of God. Yeah. And it's been really nice having smaller segments of God's Word, God's yeah. truth um, being taught to us. So thank you. Amen. Um, we have life groups resuming oh, yeah. October 1st, um, currently planned to be meeting at the Dillman residence. Um, if you want to attend or you have questions, we have a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board, um, or you can just connect with Mike. I know that having it written down is always easiest to remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you do that, it's uh, going to be, again, the first Saturday of each month at 5 p.m., at the Dillman residence. Um, and I love how Cheryl said that God is active. Yeah. God is yeah. active in our lives. Right. Yeah. Um, and with that, he's active in us just in simple ways of following him, living a life. I know I'm here today, just someone being active in how Christ is calling her. Um, and it's a simple invitation. An, an invitation opens the door just a sliver for God to bust right. right into it. <laughs> um, so remember when you're going through your day, invite, invite your friends, invite your family, everybody online. This is your invitation. Join us, join us, or continue joining us online. Thank you for that. Um, with that, I would like to invite David up here to share. Um, what is on his heart. We had the men's ministry meeting this week. Um, and David is going to share a little bit of information on that. So. Good morning, everybody. This is just short, but this is uh, I'm bringing this so I don't forget anything. Uh, Proverbs 27 7 says, as Iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another man. Yeah. And uh, all of you, everybody in this room helps sharpen me. Um, and actually, we're doing that right now. What we're doing, coming together as a community, as a, a church body, we're encouraging each other. We're being vulnerable with each other, uh, open. Um, and so we're doing that right now. But... There's a sharpening that happens in men's and women's Bible studies where men and women get together separately that can't happen in a group setting. There's things that you can say in a men's group or a women's group that you can't share in any other place. And, and in that place, we get to answer in ways that we couldn't answer um, outside of that. So this is, uh, uh, I'm just encouraging men, those maybe online or here, if you're not in the men's meeting or group, I would encourage you to come because it is a great, rich, uh, powerful time. But beyond rich and powerful, it is needed. Um, you know, I think of that you guys sharpened me here. The three things I heard kind of all applied to this. I thought, 
not only, only is it needed, we need the truth, the, the glasses that Cheryl was talking yeah, yeah. about, yeah. to see mm. that we need it. Real men see the need. And mm. Steve said, men don't like to ask for directions. And I thought, how <laughs> true that is. Yeah. But if we have our truth glasses on, on. men of God and yeah, women, yeah. they're like, you know what? I need that. I yeah. need that place where I can open up and be yeah. free and share. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think there was one more to say. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess just to, so I, I guess the, the meeting has been moved from, I think it was the third Tuesday of every month yeah. to the second, right? Yeah. And so um, I'm just inviting men to come. And for those online, maybe you haven't even been to church in a long time, yeah. but this is a smaller group setting. So this might be the place to enter in it, it is there. So I'm just inviting uh, men to come. Thank you. And with that, uh, I'd like to open it up for Dana. And just a quick prayer. Lord, I pray that we don't leave today without seeing you in a bigger way, in a clearer way. Give us those glasses. Yeah. And give us glasses to hand out to others so that they can yeah. see you in a bigger, clearer way. Thank you, God. And with that, I'd like to invite Dana up. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see everybody again today. Yeah, yeah. Praise God. Good stuff. Yeah. You know, I was going to share something. You know, when I was a younger man, you know, the instructions, they were talking about the directions and instructions that guys don't like to follow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I was a younger man, I remember opening the boxes because I'd put a lot of toys and things together. I lived with my aunt for a while and I'd put the toys together well. And we'd open up the box, she'd hand me the instructions, and I'd smile and I'd lay them down. Uh-uh. <laughs> and in my mind, I was thinking, those are for lesser men. <laughs> and then I'd put it together and something would be wrong. There'd be extra parts. I'd be like, huh, that's a mystery. And now I read the instructions carefully. <laughs> that's funny. That is funny. My goodness. Yeah. But thank you, Dave, for sharing about the men's ministry. You know, we had the meeting this week and it was great. And we spent a lot of time just just actually doing prophetic prophetic sharing and training. Mm. And, I mean, that's what it was. It just had a great time with the men. Wow. And, boy, it was good. I mean, I think, my gosh, wasn't it good, guys? Yes. Mm. Yeah. God's faithful. Mm. But, you know, avail yourself when it come, when you have an opportunity to get together ladies, men, teens, youth, yeah. kids, everybody. When you have an opportunity to get together, get together and be, an encourage, be encouraged and be an encouragement. Amen. It is. I mean, you know, there's life. Life is draining. Yeah, it is. It is. Every time you have an opportunity to go back to the gas station and get more Jesus, go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's good. <laughs> All right. So we, we started a, a message last week, a two part on authority. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, I've spoken on this a few times over the years, and uh, but. The reason I started the series, I just kept praying, and I just noticed so many people that I was busy with or talking with or just hearing things, there were a lot of believers, people, I mean, blood-bought Christians who were discouraged. Yeah. They were they were looking around, and they, they were, what it was is, literally what was not working had gripped their soul more than what was, like we are talking about earlier. Yeah. And that's not okay. And really, the, the issue comes down to authority. Who's really in control? If you keep your eyes on who's really in control, like Colossians says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you set your mind on heavenly things, on heavy, heavenly realities, the things of earth won't grab your heart and jerk you around. Yeah, that's good. Okay? And that's why we're talking about authority, because that's what it comes down to, is who's really in control. And, are, and he, is he really involved in my day-to-day -day life? Mm -hmm. And he is. Amen. Okay? So we're going to do just a brief recap, and then we're going to actually transition more to what spiritual authority looks like. All right? So a simple definition of authority is the power or right to give commands, enforce obedience, take action, or make final decisions. That's a simple definition. Okay? But that is such a small definition of what authority really is, particularly kingdom authority. Okay? Because, yeah, in the world you say, yeah, you, know, you say, you know, the president or the vice president or a senator or, or, you know, a judge. They have, literally, they have the power, right, to, to give commands, enforce obedience, and do things like that. Right. 
But the truth is, is in the kingdom, it's, it's, it's bigger than that. And that's actually, that is the fruit, but the root of authority is totally different in the kingdom. Okay, so let's keep going. So we're going to start with the authority of Jesus. All right. Matthew 28, 18. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given, past tense, mm -hmm. I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Well, that's really good because that's the only two places we've got to be concerned with. <laughs> you ready? We're here and he's got authority here and we're going there and he's got authority there. So yeah. we're golden. <laughs> and I like it all. Uh, you know, it's, I'm, this is a little bit of review for last week, but all authority. Is there anything in your world that needs his authority that's not covered in all? All. So everything that you're going to ever deal with, he has authority in and over. Everything. Everything. Yep. And in Psalm 24:1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it, the world and those who yeah. dwell in it. That's encouraging. That is encouraging. Amen. You just sit there and chew on these two verses for just a minute, and guess what? All the distractions are going to start falling away. All those things are pulling on your heart, it's going to say, Phew. and then you'll, be, you'll come back to that single-mindedness that you need. <coughs> now, let's see how Jesus uses his authority, okay? Because he has it, but he also uses it. Colossians 1.16. For through the Son, everything was created. So through Jesus, everything was created, both in the heavenly realm and on earth. All that is seen and all that is unseen. Every, let me say it again, every uh -huh. seat of power, realm of government. Thank you, God. That's in the spirit realm and in the natural. Mm -hmm. All right? Principality and authority. It was all created through him and for his purpose. There is so much going on in that one verse. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. 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 We read it. We we read it. And we see about that deep, don't yeah. we? Yeah. That's massive. It's huge. But see, please keep in mind that pretty much what's going on right now, what's going on, what 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 will always be going on, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit visited and got a plan together. Okay, they got a plan together. And, and guess what? They got the plan together, and Jesus is the one who implemented it. You see, that's what the Bible teaches. He is the one who created. He, he is the one who created Adam in the garden. According to Scripture, it was Jesus who created man. Amen. It was Jesus who created woman. That's right. And please, when you keep that in mind, it makes Jesus even more beautiful because he's the one who created. He, he literally hand created. He didn't just speak and say, man, woman. No. It literally means he handcrafted, he fashioned in the likeness and the image of God. Isn't that neat? Yeah. And then look who came back for us when man had wandered away. He came back to put his hands on his creation again. Right. He loves us too much, church. <laughs> too much. I just can't get it. Don't understand. Mm. He's worthy. He's worthy. There's nobody like him. So Jesus has complete authority. Complete, absolute, total, undeniable authority. But he also delegates his authority to people. He gives little portions of his authority to people for, for seasons, times, reasons, whatever. Okay? And in Romans 13, 1 through 7. I'm sorry. I got 13, 1 through 7. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. We're just going to look at a portion of it. In Romans 13, 1 through 7, the Bible teaches us about human authority, but we're only going to look at a couple of those verses. Here we go. Every person, that means us, <laughs> look at this, must, must, not optional, submit to and support the authorities over them. And that's something. And I got to say this. It doesn't say must support the conservative Republicans. Every, 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 every person must submit to and support the authorities over them. For there can be no authority in the universe except by God's appointment. Which means that every authority 
that exists has been instituted, literally ordained by God. And here you go, verse 2. So to resist authority is to resist the divine order of God, which results in severe consequences. Let me just say this. The severe consequences, I could go, I would go a whole different direction. But you know this, the severe consequences are not always seen out here. Somebody who who resists authority, they're going to have a problem in here and in here. The consequences will wear your conscience out if you're not blessing those in power. You'll wear yourself out. You'll suck the life out of you. You'll wear yourself fighting against something that God had put in place. That's true. So the sphere of consequence, you may say, hey, hallelujah, they're blessed. They're making tons. They're doing great. they got tons of stuff and money. Everything looks good. And they're sitting there bad mouth and bad mouth and bad mouth. But you don't understand, inside there's a war going on yeah. in them that is not good. And so they're literally living, eating, sleeping, and drinking the consequences of a nasty attitude toward the God-given authority. Wow. That's good. That's why you will never hear me say a bad thing against any person in power. That's right. A lot of you guys have been here a long time. Have you ever heard me say something bad about a person in power? No. Not one time. You won't hear it here. You won't hear it in my house. You won't hear it when I'm out there. When I'm on my own and nobody's around. <laughs> and it's just me and Holy Spirit. You, are, Holy Spirit has not heard me say anything bad about somebody. In I won't do it. I will not put my mouth on them unless I'm blessing. But see, the thing, there, there's more to it than that. It's a matter of who's really in control. That's right. And if he's in control and he gave that person that position, uh-huh. they're part of a, a bigger plan that we don't understand. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I said it last week. I got to say it again. I got to say it again. Some of you aren't here and you don't need to miss this. <laughs> <laughs> Before God created anything, he finished everything. That's Right. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and then. He went to the end and said, this is how it's going to look when it's over. Yeah. And then he backed up and started. Come on. That's how he knows how it's going to end. Yeah. Yeah. And every person in authority is a chess piece on that journey to steer the ship to get to that perfect outcome. There you go. Amen. Thank you. This was fun. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you for all of me. Boy, preaching is a blessing. It really is. Have that. But the thing is, when you have a lot of fun, you lose your spot. Don't you, Don't you, Don't you, Don't you Cheryl? Mary. All of, everybody who preaches, yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm having fun. And wait, well, where was I at? It's good. It's good. But, you know, all authority is given by God. That's right. True. I'm talking true authority is never taken by people. Hmm. That's good. You know? Do you really think that a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of people can get together and vote and put somebody that God didn't choose in a position of power? No. No. God's in control. God's in control. I feel like there's a, I, I feel a little friction in the spirit in here because I know, I, I know I'm rubbing some stuff. I feel it. I know I'm hitting some things. But just remember, hey, at least at least there's some rubbing going on. So be yeah. right here. <laughs> there you go. Come on. Amen. <laughs> uh, but see, we have to have an understanding of authority to live a successful and victorious life, don't we? Why did you come into the kingdom? Why did you trust Jesus? Because he offered us a better life. And he has the authority to back it up. That's why we trusted him. Amen. You know, it's like whenever the... the <laughs> You know, I forgot what the, the exact wording, but Jesus was speaking to the disciples and, and said, are you guys going to leave? And Peter said, where else are we going to go? Yeah. Yeah. Who else has the words of life? Who else has the authority? Who else can back it up? Who else can really help us? There ain't nowhere else to go. So guess what? You ain't got nowhere else to go anyway. <laughs> We're in. Amen. We're in. Enjoy it. That's right. See, once we understand authority, we can see it anywhere and respond appropriately to it. That's a big deal. That's huge. It's huge. Uh, I'm going to go one more place really quick. You know what this world needs to see? One of the things they need to see the church doing, they need to see the church 
praying and blessing and, 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 and literally on their face praying for every freaking leader that's in power. Yes. Amen. They need to see us. They need to see us on a street corner holding a sign, God, please bless Joe Biden and give him mm -hmm. wisdom to lead this country into Lord a better God tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Amen. They need to see that. They need to see the signs, guys. Right. You know, we got signs. This life matters. That life matters. Oh, this is terrible. This is... No, they say, hey, I love Jesus and I want yeah. things to work. Yeah. Amen. But think about it. See, that's a higher place. We're talking about Brent yeah. touched on that today, too. Mm -hmm. That's a higher place. That's a higher level. Mm -hmm. See, when people see you act like that, you make Jesus look good, and you're pulling them out of their mess to a higher place, too. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Obviously, some stuff stirring today. <laughs> Ah, now we're going to zero in on spiritual authority. Okay? All right. ah, and this will also expand our perspective of authority. Amen. So, when you think of authority, what comes to mind? I've touched on it, but mm -hmm. just a couple answers. What do you think when you think of authority? Speed limit. Speed limit. <laughs> it says, speed limit. <laughs> says I, I've got some fresh emotion attached to that. <laughs> And I'm aware because I'm aware because I, I know when she paid that most current ticket. <laughs> Bless you, sweetie. <laughs> speed, any other definition other than speeding ticket? Oh, this is fun. Responsibility. Responsibility. That's it. Yeah. Mary's all over it. Yeah. And that is that is the best. One word definition of authority. Yeah. Responsibility. Responsibility. Yeah. And according to dictionary.com, mm. okay, response all responsibilities are plural. Well, listen to this. I'm gonna read this because this is really this is this this is different. When you think of authority, somebody giving commands and enforcing obedience, that's kind of dry and, and, yeah. and not so pleasant. Mm -hmm. But when you read this, please, we're gonna pick up right here at the first bullet point. The state or fact of being responsible, answerable, or accountable for something within one's power, control, or management. A particular burden of obligation upon one who is responsible. The responsibilities of authority. A person or thing for which one is responsible. Yes. See, authority is about responsibility. You, yes. We have to answer to God. That's right. Every person, every senator, every person in power will answer to God one day for what they did yeah, with what right. he entrusted. You know, when Saul was, Saul was given authority, right. and then God said, go wipe out the Malachites. He yeah. didn't. We looked at that last week. He didn't. What did he abuse his power yeah. that God had given? He abused his authority. Yeah. And so God tore the kingdom away from him and gave it to David. But say, guess what? In glory, Saul still has the answer for that. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't? Yeah. God got him out of power because he was going to mess things up worse. Yeah. Okay, and David was, David was the chosen one after that anyway. But... Just keep in mind, is it's a it's a fearful thing to stand before the living God, church. Mm -hmm. Even as a believer. Yeah, definitely. Amen. That's another reason we need to pray for these people, man. Yeah. I mean, they're gonna stand before God and answer, give account right. for what they did right. with their delegated authority. That's right. Man, if that don't move your heart to pray for somebody, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, don't you want people praying for you that you don't have to answer for a bunch of nasty yeah, stuff when you get there? Yeah. Yeah. God help us. See, souls are in the balance. And a, 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 a better eternity is at stake in all this. You with me? All is going to have a great eternity if we trust in Christ. Yeah. But a better eternity is at stake. If you steward well, you're going to have more stuff when you get there. You're going to have more crowns and glory and provision when you get there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, I, and I've said this a couple times lately, but when it comes to the things of God, be a hoarder. <laughs> be a hoarder. Yeah. Have a mansion so full that the angels have to part a trail for you to walk through your stuff right. when you get there. Be a hoarder in glory. I like that. Oh, man. See, responsibility is exactly what spiritual authority is about. It's responsibility. Yeah. So, and that's one reason I'm, that's one reason I do my best. Yeah, I'm, I'm human and I make mistakes. And I know I've rub, probably rubbed some of you wrong, and that's just because I'm a person. I still got this stuff just like you. Yeah. All right? I'm trying, 
But that's one reason I stick with the scripture. I stick with the Bible. And I will always, as long as I'm called pastor, I will stick with the word of God. That's right. I have to. Because I receive a stricter judgment, guys. Amen. Everybody right. who teaches that's receives right. a stricter judgment. And that's why the Bible says, don't, hey, don't let a lot of you desire to become teachers. Amen. Because realize right. that whenever you, when God gives you that authority and that position, that responsibility, yeah. you're going to have to answer for it. And so that's that's kind of scary, man. Yeah. I'll tell you that seriously. Yeah. You know, because it's not going to be a disagreement, guys, when we get there. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to be like, well, geez, I disagree with that. No. It doesn't work like that. No, you get there, you answer, and you're rewarded or you forfeit your rewards. But there's a there's a higher standard for those who teach. All right, so let's talk about how do Christians get promoted by God into positions of authority. Because there's a promotion process even in the church and the kingdom. How does yeah. that work? How, what does yeah. it look like? So the following verses I'm going to read really tell us the only way. There's only one way to receive ever-increasing authority in the kingdom. Yeah. And here it is. It's in 1 Peter 5, 5 the second part through 7. All of you clothe yourself with humility towards one another. Tie on the servant's apron. I like that note. Yeah. For God is opposed to the proud the disdainful, the presumptuous, and he defeats them. Look at that. You're fighting against God if you're not, not a servant. Mm -hmm. But he gives grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. In light of that truth, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Look at this. Set aside self-righteous pride so that he may exalt you to a place of honor, That's a right. place of responsibility in his service at the appropriate time. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns once and for all on him. Mm -hmm. For he cares about you yeah. with deep, deepest affection and watches mm -hmm. over you very carefully. This is this is literally the blueprint. Yeah. The blueprint to get into a position of authority yeah. in the church That's and in the true. kingdom. This is it. It's humility towards one another. And verse 5 is really the key to understanding all three of the verses. I'm going to read it one more time. Mm -hmm. This is the key to understanding everything. All of you clothe yourself with humility towards one another. Tie on the ape for the servant's apron, for God is opposed to the proud. And I'm not going to read the best, rest of the note, but pick up right. But he gives grace to the humble. Yeah. That's the key to understanding those verses. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says in verse 6, humble yourself under God's mighty hand. Mm -hmm. See, humility towards brothers and sisters in Christ. Humility in the house of God. Humility even in the community. Humility is the key to growing in authority in the kingdom. It is. And see, verse 7, I want us to kind of touch on something, because we see what it says here, but let's let's actually look at it in the context of what's going on here. See, casting all your cares, all, uh, all of your cares, your anxieties your, and your worries and your concerns once fall on him. Now see, I want you to understand this. These cares are connected right here with serving others. These cares are connected with you wanting to be promoted and somebody else is getting your stuff. They're getting your opportunities. Okay. In the context here, what he's talking about, it means do not worry about promotion in the kingdom. Amen. Don't focus on promotion. Don't focus on authority in the kingdom. Yep. Yeah. And, and yeah, like Cheryl's saying to you, stand up and say that, Cheryl. Yeah. Come on. Come on, Cheryl. <laughs> that was good. You came up with it. Say it. Stand over there. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not just the church and the kingdom, but like yeah. in, on your job, right? on your sports team, yeah. in the community, when you're doing community service, when you're yeah. part of organizations, in your friend group, anytime you're in a sandbox with other people mm. on the workplace or whatever, um, you know, we, we all want to see our, our, our yellow brick road yeah. of, of where God's taking yeah. us. Like, there's my yellow brick road. This, I'm following my road. Why are all these people in my way? Yeah. Um, these concepts yeah. apply. Because yeah. you want to enjoy your journey, yes. not beat everybody to death trying to do your yeah. journey. <laughs> that's right. Amen. That's Amen. right. Amen. That's good. That's right. Yeah. And I said this last week. I don't think it's in the. I don't think I have it in my notes this week. Nobody, nobody can keep you out of God's best. Amen. Amen. That's right. Nobody can. That's right. If you have to push, pull, kick, kick, and scratch to get something. You don't want it. Mm -hmm. And guess what? If you get it, it's going to be temporary and yeah. it's going to wear you out and suck the life out of you. 
Because if God didn't give it to you, you can't sustain it. That's right. You can't keep it. If God didn't put it in your hand, you can't hold on to it. You cannot keep it. That's true. You can't do it. Amen. It'll wear you out. The thing is, is, see, God is the one who gives vision. And that's, you know what I'm saying? He gives vision for our life. And then he gives us provision because he's for the vision. That's what pro means for. He's for the vision he gave you, so he had there's provision for it. Okay. So please, whenever you whenever you got something in your heart, and all of us, all of us deal with it. I mean, particularly whenever we want something, we want something, we want something, and then we see somebody else get exactly what we want and they act like they don't really care. And I'm like, <laughs> But you know, every time you see that, every time you see that, you know, that's Holy Spirit touching your heart saying, How are you gonna deal with this? Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to have a sweet attitude and rejoice with them that rejoice? And you're like, no, no, no. And you're like, yes, yes, yes. But see, that's that's the key to progress in the kingdom is rejoice with those who get what you want. Rejoice yeah. with those who get that authority that you're craving you in the go. house. Yes. See? And I'm talking genuine rejoicing. Yes. From the heart. Yeah. Not mouth service as men please. Right. <laughs> Oh, praise God. All right, let's keep moving. <laughs> but, you know, and that's why it says in Philippians, talk about Jesus. You know, he humbled himself more than any person who's ever or will ever live. Yeah, right. And that's why it says, that's why God has exalted him to the highest place and given him a name above every name. He has supreme authority. That's why in his name, every knee shall bow. Amen. And every tongue will confess. See, that's what's scary. Because every non-believer one day is going to bow and confess that he's Lord, even though they're not go they're not going to be in heaven with us. Yeah, That's scary. Wow. <clears throat> There's no disputing his authority. Jesus has all authority. And he will for all of eternity. Amen. And, that, and aren't you glad Father gave it? That's a good father. Yeah. A good parent always wants their kid to go further than they went. And that's why he says, Jesus... Enjoy. It's yours. I love you. Yeah. Praise God. Let's keep rolling. Amen. All right. So Mark 9.35, Jesus sat down, called the 12 disciples to come around him and said to them, if anyone wants to be first, he must be content. So here's the heart right here. <laughs> be content to be last and become servant of all. See, Anybody can serve for a little while. You know, we can all serve some, but to be content with it, that's where it gets kind of hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. You know, the thing is, because contentment, that's always a heart thing. That's not a head thing. The choice is made here first, but it's walked out here. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. And it means genuinely serve from the heart. Mm. Wholeheartedly serving and preferring others. And again, in Matthew 23, 11 and 12, the greatest among you will be the one who always serves others from the heart. Remember this. If you have a lofty opinion of yourself and seek to be honored, you will be humble. Cool. That's encouraging. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesus picked right. on that one. Yeah. I'm joking, Lord. I'm joking. But look, but if you have a modest, look at this, a modest, a realistic opinion of yourself. It doesn't mean like a you know like a beating yourself up opinion. Modest means a healthy, uh, a healthy kind of a a balanced, real perspective. Okay. Opinion of yourself and choose. See there, there's a head game right there. You choose it. You choose to humble yourself. You'll be honored. There's so much in the word, man. I've only preached for a few minutes, and look at this, man. This is this is a lot. <laughs> That's enough to change our whole life. That's right. Amen. Fifteen minutes in a word, we can be new people. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, but see, when it comes to authority, when it comes to authority, the way up is down. Yeah. The way up is down. That's right. right. Now we're going to look at some examples of authority in Christ's church. This is Ephesians four eleven and twelve, common scripture. 
Paul writes, and he has appointed some with the grace. See that appointment right there. That means the shared responsibility. With the grace to be apostles. Some with the grace to be prophets. Some with the grace to be evangelists. Some with the grace to be pastors. And some with the grace to be teachers. And their calling, see that this is called the five-fold ministry or the five offices of ministry in the church. Yeah. Look at what the calling is on, on these offices. To nurture and prepare all the holy believers to do their own, their own, uh -huh. your own That's right. works of ministry. Uh -huh. You see that? And as they do this, look at, and as you do what God called you to do, uh -huh. and as I do what God called me to do, we will enlarge and build up the body of Christ. Isn't that something? Amen. You know, I'm not called to do everything, neither are you. That's right. I'm not. Thank God. Neither are you. Okay? Yeah. But see, the fivefold ministry, and I, I'm this is a whole teaching in itself. Yeah. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna very lightly touch it. Okay. There are spiritual gifts taught of in the Bible. God gives spiritual gifts to his people. These are people gifts. Mm -hmm. the, these people themselves are the gifts to the church. And that those people gifts, it's, it literally they are given to the church and their full-time, seven-day-a-week occupation in the kingdom is to do this. It doesn't cut on and cut off. You don't clock in and clock out when you're in one of these offices. It does not come and go. I sleep with concern about you guys. I yeah. wake up with concern about you guys. Yeah. I pray with concern about you guys. I pray with concern about the church. I cry over what's going on in the world and in the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it never cuts off. No. Mm -mm. See, they're, 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 the responsibility is heavy. Yeah. These, these officers have a heavy, it's a weighty responsibility, and it does not cut off. No. Every single day, you eat, sleep, and drink this. That's right. So these are people gifts. Yeah. Okay, people gifts. That's huge. Amen. Mm. But the Bible has many other examples of leaders in the church. But the, the picture of leadership can really be seen in those examples of people gifts. And then, of course, Holy Spirit gives gifts to people for the church and to build up the church. You see, and we talk about grace as being, you know, a simple def definition of grace being uh, unearned, uh, was it undeserved, unearned favor and kindness. You've probably heard that. That's been going around a long time. But to me, grace is bigger than that. Yeah. Grace is everything you need mm -hmm. to make the most of where you're at. Mm, that's good. That's awesome. See? So there's a great, you got grace to be where you're at right now. Yeah. And that's every single thing you need to be where you're at and enjoy Jesus and make the most of it. That's grace. That's grace. Amen. So we're going to look at some of the responsibilities that God-given leaders in the church have. Okay, so let's look at this. First Peter 5, 2. Okay, Peter says, Shepherd and guide and protect the flock of God among you. Now see, we looked at the, the, the offices of ministry here. But see, nurture and prepare. Okay, part of the nurturing and preparing is to shepherd, to guide and to protect. A lot to that. So let's talk about this. So shepherd, actually, someone who the Lord raises up in leadership in the church is to care for the total well-being of the flock. That's what it means to shepherd. That's to care for the total well-being. Yeah. You know, what, what does a shepherd do with the sheep? Watch he, he watches over them. He protects yeah. them. He makes sure they're in a safe place. He watches out for wolves and, and bad, bad things. Yeah. <laughs> you know? He tries to keep them out of the bad weather. Yeah. He tries to keep them together so one of them don't wander off and get eight. Right. You know? You're There's right. so much to it. And one of them gets sick, he takes it off sign, he cares for it. You know, one of them gets injured, he cares for the wounds. Shepherd, it's a total well being. Yeah. Okay. And also another thing is, you know, occasionally the shepherd has to use the staff. He does. He has a staff for a reason. It ain't just a, it ain't just a hood ornament. <laughs> you know? And what is, with his staff, what does he do? Okay? Occasionally he pokes the sheep. Hey, get in gear. You're going the wrong way. Hey, hey well, that's just weird. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Do I sound very spiritual? But, but you know what? Even if I didn't say it right, the Holy Spirit will interpret it right. You'll hear what you need to hear when that staff touches you. I'm trusting. But also, every now and then, the sheep get creative and they run off all in the ditch. Yeah. And they don't want to, I can't get out. Yeah. And then you reach down that hook and grab it and pull them out of yeah. the ditch. Yeah. So the, the staff is motivational. Yeah. It's also get back in the fold. Come on back to where it's safe. Yeah. The, the staff's important. Yeah. You know? Mm. Yeah. And protect the sheep. Yeah. That is such a that is a bigger thing in today's world than I than I've ever seen in my personal life. Every time I tell you to pray for your leaders and bless them, mm -hmm. you know what? That's protecting you. That's right. It is. It's protecting you. Amen. It may not seem like, but it's part of your protection. Oh, yeah. It's protecting your soul. It's protecting your quality of life. It's protecting who you are. Amen. And not only that, there have been so many times that, that me, we have people, you know, fairly often who want to come in and share something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I talk to them, I know. Mm -hmm. You're not coming in and sharing that. Yeah. No, we don't need that. That's not the food we're eating in this house. Right. You know, and early on, man, there were people wanting to, you know, get curriculum at our house and stuff, man. We had somebody come over visiting that thing, and all of a sudden, they're passing out their own little DVD sets. Yeah. And I'm like, whoa! Yeah. Whoa, whoa, this ain't a marketing campaign. Yeah. I, I invite you over here to have a little fellowship, not get yeah. your ministry on. Yeah. And so I actually took all the DVD, set, DVD sets from the people, because I knew the guy was off doctrinally in the spot, and I went back to his car and visited him. I said, here you go, take these. Yeah. Those are not for this group, okay? Right. You didn't run it through me. We didn't talk about it. I don't know what's on it, but I do know that you don't believe the same thing in, in regard to salvation we do. Awesome. So, so here's your DVDs. Be blessed. Yeah. Yeah. But I've done that a lot of times, heading off things yeah. and dealing with stuff. And I'm not going far on this, but there's a lot to it. That's the reason we have a safe place. There's so much more to this. But yeah. be grateful for the safety and the freedom you have in this place, church. Yeah. Amen. You're safe here for a reason. There's a cost with it. I'm not. Please don't pat me yeah. on the back. I just want you to see the scope of what's going on yeah. in this house. Yeah. There's a reason it's sweet in here. There's peace in here. Yeah. That's part of being a shepherd. Right? Yeah. 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 And God, you know, God's got a plan for us, church. Yeah. He's got a plan. We're going somewhere. We really are, and it better be following Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> He's also got a plan for you individually. Yeah. He does. And, and that's a huge responsibility, but one of my responsibilities is to figure out where God's calling you to go and help you get there. Yeah. <laughs> that's a heavy responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. It also requires partnership. You know, I can't even help God in the smallest amount if you won't let me. Amen. It's, true. Right. it's a partnership. Just like, just like you and Holy Spirit have to do everything together, don't you? Amen. Okay. Yeah. Well, guess what? You have to really uh, allow your leader to help you a little bit sometimes, too, yeah. Yeah. so we can get where we need to go, and you can be all God created you to be. Because believe me, I don't want I don't want none of your stuff. I don't want none of that. I want to see you be all God created you could, to be. Yeah. I want to see you go farther than I go. Yeah. You with me? Amen. On that one, I do. Amen. I want to see you guys. I mean, I want to see you guys just rock the world for Jesus. Yeah. That would delight me nothing more than anything else. So you guys make a difference for him. Yeah. Yeah. That's my heart for every one of you. Amen. You be all God created you to be. And then you go home and enjoy that celebration with that house full of goodies. <laughs> mm. So we're going to look just quickly at a, a biblical way to share authority in his church. Okay. In Numbers 11, the people of Israel are in the wilderness. And one more time, they're complaining. <laughs> yeah, everybody's shocked. <clears throat> God shows the people whining and complaining. Yeah, just, read, just read the Old Testament. You'll see it more than you want to. Um, but see, they're, they're, they're talking, oh, it's so hard. It's so difficult. Yeah, it's rough out here. Moses, you let us out here to die. I know. <laughs> Moses hears their complaining and says to the Lord, okay, Says, I'm not able to carry all these people along. Yeah. See, then there's responsibility right there. <laughs> because the burden, the responsibility for this group is too heavy for me. Yeah. 
accordingly. The Lord said to Moses, see, Moses was a great leader, but he was not a good delegator. Okay. He was not a good delegator. Awesome leader, but not a good delegator. Not yet. He's getting better. He's about to get a lot better. So accordingly, in Numbers 11, 16, accordingly, the Lord said to Moses, gather for me. Look at that, gather for me. But see, Moses, you gather for me 70 men from among the elders of Israel. Look at this. Whom you know. Not whom I know. Whom you know. To be the elders of the people. In other words, people you know to have a credible reputation among the people as a person of integrity, a person of honor, a person who actually serves, a person who respects, and a person you, you have relationship with. Am I talking too loud? No. Yeah, I just, I, just, no, I just don't use the mic. I compensate. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Um, look here. Whom you know to be elders of the people and their officers, bring them to the tent of meeting, the tabernacle, and let them stand there with you. The senior man stands there with the people he chose. Okay. In verse 17, then I will come down and speak with you there. You see that? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I will take away some, and here's some of the response, the spirit, some of the, the, the responsibility that the Holy Spirit is using and doing with you, some of that, who is upon you and will put him upon them. Mm -hmm. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you so that you will not have to bear it all alone. This is the biblical method for promotion in the kingdom of God. Amen. This is it. This is it. Amen. See, Moses was a great leader, mm -hmm. but he was not great at sharing authority. Yeah. He wasn't. And I don't want to go too far back with this. I really think part of that is because he was raised in Pharaoh's house. Yeah. You with me? He was raised in Pharaoh's house, so what was modeled to him was absolute power of one man dictating to other people. And so his model had not been one of servanthood. And so that was still, I believe, a little bit in his bones even after 40 years in, the, in Midian, which is a place of strife, which humbled him. And then he came back. But I just really think that he had to learn. And God was saying, okay, here's what we're going to do, Moses. Gather the people who you know, who you trust, who have a reputation among the people of being good leaders and good servants, who are already doing the job, basically. Now I'm going to empower them to do it better. Hmm. Yeah. Why do you think God instructed Moses to choose men he knew? Why do you think that Moses, you know, God could have, God knows everybody, doesn't he? God is good said, I like this one, I like that one, and I like that one. Moses, go gather these. He could have gave him a list. Go get these guys. Why do you say, why do you think God told Moses to choose men that he knew to be leaders in the community, to be servants in the community. Why do you think that is? It is a very he knew their responsibility. Integrity. I like it. Lots of answers. One at a time. He knew their integrity. That's yeah. right. See? Yeah. To bear the responsibility. Partnership. Yeah. Yeah. And I heard something over here. Yeah, you, you trust people differently when you know them. Yeah. Because you have to. What's that? Because you have to. It's good. That's, all those are good answers, and all of them are right. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about it. Let's get into it. Moses had to work with these people. You know, he needed to know what was in their heart, and he needed to have. He already needed to already have relationship time in with these people in order to work with them. See, God knows everybody, but that don't mean me and you can work well together. No, God work, God can work with most anybody. Hmm. I'm not going to say everybody, but most anybody. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I can. That doesn't mean Cheryl can. That doesn't mean all the council members. Yeah. Minister, you know, that, it doesn't mean that. That's good. Mm -hmm. well, these people already had a relationship. Moses and them had already had some, some connection there. You know, they, they'd already, they already knew each other. Yeah. And they, they had a proven track record and at least enough relationship 
where God says, you've already, you already know these guys. You already worked, done some stuff with them. You already know that the community, they're already doing the job. So bring them in, and now we can ramp things up, and, and you and the group can get more done. You know, because like everything else in our lives, it comes down to a heart issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It does. First Chronicles 12, I'm, I'm just going to read through this and teach just a little bit, okay? It's pretty clear. All right, verse 12, chapter 12, 16 through 18, it says, Then some of the men of Benjamin and Judah came to the stronghold of David. So this is when David's running from Saul. Verse 17, David went out to meet them and said to them, if you have come peacefully to me to help me, my heart shall be united with you. See, it's a heart thing. But if you have come to betray me to my adversaries, since there is no violence or wrong in my hands, may the God of our fathers look on what you're doing and punish you. Verse 18, then the Holy Spirit came on Amasai, Amasai, who was chief of the 30, who said, we are yours, O David. And with you. You see that? We're yours and we're with you. Our heart is with you. Mm -hmm. O son of Jesse, peace, peace be to you and peace be to him who helps you. For your God helps you. Then, only then, David accepted and received them and made them officers of his troops. Mm -hmm. But you see what's going on here? And I'm just being real. This is, this. you know, you guys are a family. Every now and then we have we have people who visit church and come in and man they come in and they want to get their ministry on they I'm I'm called to this and I'm called to that and I got thirty years in this and thirty years now I'm like well I don't know you yeah we don't right. know you right spend some time and get to know the family let's rub elbows a little yeah. bit and spend some time together yeah. and we've had people who said oh, I ain't got, I, can't, I ain't got time for that yeah that's true I'm like well God bless you I hope you find where you what you need yeah, yeah. you're right Sam. but yeah. you know it's a matter of like right here. We have to know each other a little bit. We have yeah. to spend time together. We have to see what's going on in each other's heart. Yeah. And, and another big thing right here, you see what they said right here at the bottom, for your God helps you. If people don't see that God called me to be the senior pastor of this place, we can't work together. That's right. And that's not an authority issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, as far as, it's not an abuse of power issue. Right. The fact is, is, I didn't choose this. God chose me. Yes, yes, that's right. Come on. He chose me. He sent me here. He chose Cheryl. He chose yes. our council members, our leaders. Right. You know, if you if you see that God, God, and the way that looks is, and this is a heavy thing. I know I'm sharing it. That's right. God put the responsibility for this church on me and Cheryl whenever He said birth it. And I promise you, from the time we birthed this church and it started, we have been looking to share responsibility. Yes. We don't like doing a lot. I mean, we like yes. doing a lot, but we don't do everything. Right. But I'm like, man, you want to help? Praise God. Let's yeah. get to know each other a little bit. Here, take some responsibility. There you go. Take it. Mm -hmm. God, take some of that spirit off of me and give it to them. Because I, right. I help them. Amen. Help them do it. Yeah. But see, that's the way it's supposed to be. Amen. Am I, am, I, am I being okay? No, you're good. <laughs> Some of the stuff I just don't talk about a lot. Yeah. I just don't. Some of it I just chew on it. <laughs> Too long sometimes. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. See, the thing with David is you see, David was not interested in these people's giftings or abilities. Mm -hmm. He didn't care about that. Yeah. Huh. Okay. He didn't care. I mean, look at them. They came in. These guys were, you know, yeah. these were mighty people, man. They came in. We're here to and, and they were, you know, these were warriors. And what did David need hiding in the back of the cave? Warriors. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Thank you, God. But see, David was only interested in the one, the one single most important thing. Is where's your heart? Where's your heart? If your heart is for me, and for the work, and for what's going on here. Yeah. If your heart's for that, then we can work together. Yeah. Then we can do great things together. Yeah. Sure. I'm really trying my best. I not only say this, but I'm really trying my best to communicate. Yeah. Guys, I'm not, I'm not a dictator, nor am I looking to be yeah. some kind of a freaky authority figure that mashes people. No. That's not in me. Yeah. 
my favorite thing is to see you do stuff that that's, that fulfills the call on your life and me not have to touch it. I'd rather touch you and say good job yeah. than touch it. Yeah, yeah. Amen. <laughs> All right, let's go a little more. Oh. Just a little more. Just a little more. Wow. Uh, hmm. now, I do take note. When somebody comes in and they say, God, use me here and use me there, I do see that. And, and the leaders see that. I'm like, well, that's cool. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I'm glad he's used you in that. Yeah. But see, everybody's gifted. Every one of you here is gifted. Everybody, every yeah. non-believer out here has a gift from God that's meant to be used in his hand. That's right. So everybody who comes in is gifted. Yeah. You know? Everybody is. But you can't work with gifting. You work with hearts. Yeah. And if you work at the heart, if your mm. hearts are meshed and you're working good, mm. the giftings will always flourish. Mm. Okay. They'll, if the hearts are knitted, the giftings will be healthy when they're expressed. Yeah. And there'll be a blessing to the body. Mm. Wow. Mm. And this really comes back to simply put, what is Jesus more interested in? Your heart mm -hmm. or your ability, strength, and gift? Your heart. It's always a heart thing. Yeah. It's a heart thing with Jesus. You know, it's a heart thing with serving. It's a heart thing with relations. It's a heart thing with family. It's a heart thing with eternity. It's a it's always a heart thing. It's what's going on in the very core of your being, you know? Let's get to know that. Let's get to know who you really are. Let's talk about that. Let's look at that. Let's enjoy that. You know, and I think I think Michelle mentioned this. But, you know, you're more important than anything you'll ever do in this place. That's true. <laughs> and even in your family, even out, you're more important than anything that you'll ever do. Amen. Jesus didn't die for your gifting. Mm -mm. He didn't. He didn't die for you. He didn't bleed his last drop of blood out. Yeah. So you could prophesy. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. No. He died for your for your soul, for yeah. the core of your being, for your heart. Yeah. For a complete heart renewal and restoration. And when that's done, guess what? That's the fertile soil for the Holy Spirit to start planting those other things in. Yeah. Right. All right. So a little bit more, we'll wrap up. Hmm. And one thing that's kind of neat with this is, you know, when things get tough and, and things get warm, you know, when you start working together, the friction happens. Yeah. We've talked about that a lot. You know, you, we can all we can all sit on the couch and be in glory land. Yeah. <laughs> when you start serving Jesus together, though, guess what? People are involved. <laughs> all right. And when people are involved, guess what? You're going to start having some friction because, you know, they didn't do what I wanted them to do. Or, man, I could have did that. Or, what's going on? Why did you? What's wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah. But that's the friction. Yeah. And see, friction always reveals the heart. True. The heat reveals the heart. Mm. It does. Because all that pleasant gifting and glorious expression of the gifts kind of goes out the window when somebody upsets us. Yeah. And that's why God told Moses, people you know, people you've seen walk through some tough stuff, people yeah. who've got some grit, people who stayed nice when they didn't, whenever they could have been nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a heart thing. It's always a heart thing, church. It's always a heart thing. So we're going to be wrapping up here. <sighs> commitment through difficulty is really a valuable thing. When things aren't going your way, I want to see what happens. Yeah. See what and the good times I, I put this one, the, the people that you know, I know a lot of you, some some of you know I know a good bit. Yeah. But whenever things aren't going your way, that's when I pay the closest attention. You laugh, we all laugh about it, it's but it's true. the truth. Yeah. Because whenever we're not getting what we want, I want to see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> when God hadn't answered that prayer and it's been yeah. going on and on and on, I want to see if you know, see where you're at. Yeah. And I'm not looking for fault and flaws. I'm not. Yeah. I'm looking for where Jesus is and what he's doing. Because yeah. mm -hmm. he's in that. If something surfaces that isn't pleasant, guess what? That's Holy Spirit 
right, the Holy Spirit shaking up that temple and messing up the temple and yeah. throwing around some tables and stuff and giving you a chance to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, we're in it for the long haul. We are. We're in, we're in this thing for, this is eternal. What we're doing right now is eternal. Right. Everything's eternal. Amen. You know, souls of men, women, and children. You know, us. I mean, we got to keep this a sweet place to live. I mean, we, we want to have a great church community and a great church family. Amen. It's important that we value each other and that we work on our relationships and work on our own hearts to do that. It's huge. Amen. It's huge. That's really why the Bible says, last verse, the Bible says, above all else, guard your heart. For from it, everything you do flows, excuse me, for everything you do flows from it. So, so, you know, when we're on a team, you know, it's easy to be committed to a vision until the person who is at the top is not doing their job very well or things aren't going very well. Okay. It's mm -hmm. easy to be pretty selective with those things. Yeah. And we are in control of our heart. And one of the things you said last week, I forgot what it was, you, you talked about your, your opening thing about the, about people with their heart. Something like this. It was like your opening thing from last week. I don't remember exactly what it was. People don't know. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yeah, that's that's one of them. That's good. You know, um, it's, you know, being a fair weather friend, you know, when, when things mm. are going really well, it's easy to be committed. Yeah. Um, it, it's not, the, it, the words, but it's just not coming to me. Okay. Just keep that, I'm just going to keep talking out because I've got it. It's just not there. It's okay. There a second ago. Okay. Take a second and breathe, see what happens. <laughs> there you go. There you go. But, yeah, I don't need this anymore. But kind of a, just, a, a, just a couple more thoughts because this, I know all PowerPoint stuff's over. Um, please live in a higher place. I know we've talked about that a few times. Live in a higher place and understand that we're all navigating eternity the best we can. Yeah. And you know, and as 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 a senior pastor, I will rub you wrong from time to time. I may say things that you don't like, but I promise you, it's never to hurt or offend. Right. You know, I'm just following Jesus. I'm doing the best I can, and I'm trying. I really, I promise you, I'm really trying. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and know that it's a heart thing. Please keep that in mind. It's a heart thing. I mean, somebody can come in here and they can be so gifted and just dynamic and this, that, and another. But remember, remember. That it's all, you know, it ha they have to be good for the family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have to be good for the family. Yeah. We have to be able to work together. We have yeah. to be on the same page. We have to be able to communicate. Mm -hmm. We have to. Mm -hmm. You know, it, that's what we're in for. I mean, I don't want to live a life stressed out mm -hmm. with a bunch of dysfunction all the time that can yeah. be avoided. Yeah. If you start, if you start recognizing giftings and working on, with only giftings, that's what you can. You can be stressed out. You can have a lot of dysfunction. Things ain't gonna work. Mm -hmm. But hearts, hearts knitted together, are God commands the blessing Amen. when we have unity. Amen. And that's what we're shooting for. Unified hearts is going to command a blessing. You got it now. I felt All it. Right. So, there, <laughs> so tagging into that, it's 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 safety in relationship. Mm. So I've been involved in organizations that, you know, it's it's the relationship isn't the most important and things right. people they want to walk away if things aren't going the way they think they're supposed to go mm -hmm. it's like I, i'm with mm -hmm. you as long as you're going in the direction i think yeah. that you need to go yeah. but you know yeah. god's not concerned with where you're going mm -hmm. like he seriously isn't mm -hmm. and and take it I'm, I'm trying to couch this in the way you'll, you'll get it he's more concerned about who you're how you're treating people yeah that's mm -hmm. right Okay. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah. We don't want to be going off a cliff together, like, yeah. right? You know, you know, that's foolish. Yeah. But like, if you are like, there's the goal. The heck with you guys. Mm. We're going there, mm. 
and you just messed up and you just messed up mm -hmm. and you're not doing it right. We're supposed to go there. Peace out. I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if you've been around people like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Raise your hand if you've been on a team with people like that. Uh, raise two hands if you were glad when they moved on. <laughs> because the road gets bumpy. It gets bumpy because we're dealing with people that mess up. They get mad. They get upset. They get their feelings hurt. They get, get humbled. You know, it's times like that when you need to be glad that you're sitting in the second chair instead of the first. Because that person in the front chair is dealing with the flames and the fire because they're showing up and they're messing up. They're carrying the heat. You, that's the time you need to be sitting in that second chair saying, hallelujah, praise yeah, God, I'm yeah. not dealing with what he's dealing with. I get, yeah. get, get to have fun with the rest of you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I've been through churches oh, going, yeah. I've been in church before that were going through massive transitions. Oh, yeah. And people just don't want to deal with it. Yeah. They don't want to deal with it, they move on. And it's times like that when you and your character shows yeah, up yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's when and that's when god gives you the opportunity to mm. take the football and run mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. because that's the time when you can go strengthen and build relationship because mm -hmm. it's times when the heat is turned up that the relationship is the most important yeah. Yeah. it's times like that where when you show up with your heart mm. it's times when the team yeah. is half wanting to fall apart it's times like that when your love for each other is more important oh, than yeah. where than where the ship mm. is supposedly going. Mm -hmm. God's got the direction; He puts it on the leader. Mm. Yeah. I've been my happy my happiest when I've worked in offices and worked on teams mm. that were fighting like crazy. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know what y'all are doing. I'm having fun. I'm making money. <laughs> you know? Hey, let's hang out. Yeah, right. it's terrible. The kitchen's crashing. But yeah. that don't mean we can't love each other and have a good time along yeah. the way. Yeah. Because the buck wasn't stopping with me, but I could definitely help the one who was running with a broke leg. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That when when an organization is crashing, that's when you know who loves you. Come on. Amen. That's that's it. It. And if you that's can't it. handle the crash, yes. you don't need to be carrying the football when times are good. Mm. If you can show yes, up when nobody's showing up, uh -huh. and you can say, yeah, I'm going to help you, um, I'm showing up, Yeah, you know, that's when we know you've got my back. Yeah. And that's what David was saying. Yeah. Yeah. David was like, we're living in caves, yeah. our wives got kidnapped a while back, yeah. um, <laughs> all hell's breaking loose sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And like, are you going to have my back? Are you going to yeah. love me? Yeah. Because God does have plans, and we are working together to get there. Yeah. And if you can show up that way at your job, yeah. if you can show up that way in your community to where, yeah, it's bad, but I'm going to pray for our leaders, yeah. even yeah. the bad ones, even yeah. the ones I don't like. Yeah. I'm going to pray for them, and I'm actually going to show up and help. Yeah. That these, these concepts, they don't work just for church. They work everywhere yeah. you go. Yeah. If God's got your feet planted in a group, and you know God's got you in that group. Giving your heart to it is valuable. And I've been I've been in in situations to where I was so hurt and so wounded because things didn't go my way, put down, shoved aside. But you know what? I said, God, that person's in the authority here. I'm not. That's right. And I may be getting pushed around. Every single time in my Christian walk, on the other side of it, God has lifted me up. Mm -hmm. I've yep. gotten nuggets out of that relationship that helped me the next time. Yeah. Every time I've come out a winner. Mm, that's right. Um, there's been times where it didn't go the way I wanted it to go, but I purposed in my heart, I will get the most out of this relationship. Now, I've mm. spent time with a lot of you guys, and I know many of you have been hurt yeah. by leadership in church, or you've been yeah. hurt by yeah. your group. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, you can reframe that and say, mm, I was right. not hurt by that group. God used that group to make me better, stronger. Yeah, God good, used good. that group to help me show up at the next group yeah. better, stronger. Right. God showed that's me good. there how I can be a better person next time. There's some nuggets. And if you're still like, they did me wrong, there was nothing in that for me. Mm -hmm. I challenge you to go back with Jesus. Yeah, with the Holy it. Spirit yeah. and say, Lord, that stuck. Mm -hmm. I had a gal friend. She kept encouraging her kid to play baseball. Mm -hmm. She took him to the team. 
three years in a row. The coaches didn't like him, and he wasn't very good. But she kept encouraging him. After three years, she's like, okay, we just gave up. We're not going to ask him to play anymore. I've watched that kid grow up, through, and, and he fought like three years. He finally gave up. He is one of the most successful people I know today as a man. He's like 30-something now. Very successful. Yeah. Because, it, and, and the coaches were, it was a terrible situation. It was just bad, you know? I mean, you, I just looked at the poor kid. I'm like, honey, you got two left feet to start with. <laughs> you know? But, but, you know, mom said, this is going to do you some good, son. And, and, and she just let it, she let it run its course. And the kid, he let it run its course, too. And he got his nuggets. Yeah. And it helped him have grit. It helped him have character. He chose to get something good out of it. And I'm telling you, anything you've been through that's been hard and didn't work out the way it was supposed to, that is the sweet spot with you Amen. and Jesus to say, God, you had something for me there. Yes. And I challenge you to ask God, what is it? Pray over it. You'll, yeah. you'll find that there's something in the pain yeah. that's going to help you shine now. Because yeah. we need you. Yeah. We Amen. need you. We need that broken past that you yeah. have. Yeah. We don't just like it. We want it. Yeah, yeah. That's right. We want to give that spot a place to blossom mm. with the Lord. That's good. And, and just let that settle on you however the Holy Spirit you, lets Lord. it settle. That's good. Thank you. That was good. Thank you. Yeah. That's good. Amen. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you, God. Ooh. Thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus, thank you that you have all authority and we can trust you. Yes, and thank you for sharing authority. Help us, Lord, everybody who, who's doing anything with, Lord, we're all doing something with a measure of authority. Yes. Help all of us to be good stewards. Yes, Please, Lord, give us wisdom with what you've entrusted to us. Lord, help us make a difference. Lord, in everything we do, everything we experience, help us to stay that city on a hill. Amen. That lighthouse that shines bright. And God, please bless the gateway. Lord, help us to, Lord, help the, the quality of our family to continue to increase. And Lord, continue to build unity in this place. Lord, we sure love you. Thank you for this time in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen.